Let's bring in George Tillis, Senior Markets Correspondent here on the network. George, we're talking Microsoft, uh, another one of the uh, elite eight, as I call them. Uh, it struggled since earnings last quarter, but do you look at this one based on valuation or based on expectations moving forward for this company? Because it seems like it might be a little bit rich compared to historicals. Yeah, I think the, the valuation, you're right. If you look at it relative to its five-year average, it's looking a little rich at around 30 times forward earnings. Uh, also, considering the uh, the earnings growth for overall for, for Microsoft at around 12%, uh, that's relatively modest compared to their five-year average. And I think, you know, overall, the profitability for Microsoft is still remarkable considering the net income margins, which are about 30% for the business. I mean, this is essentially you know a, a megatech monopoly and uh you can't say anything other than that but they continue to just expand on their uh, their partnerships with for instance companies like oracle which oracle again runs really the uh the enterprise resource uh, backbone software for you know many large corporations and now of course their mainframe integration with clouds front end uh, essentially computing technology that makes a lot of sense for both these companies to integrate their uh, their cloud-based infrastructure and that is again more more margin enhancing technologies that's probably going to be good for both companies altogether but if you look at you know last quarter it was actually really good uh, you know the company generated about eight uh, percent revenue growth with about 21 percent earnings growth so about three times sales in terms of earnings overall the uh, the the cloud-based revenues are continuing to inch higher they gain market share they have about 22 percent of the total uh, cloud uh, market share out there still behind AWS, but nonetheless, that's that's very large for one company to have. And I think you know overall, if you think about artificial intelligence, uh, you know Microsoft essentially was the was a major investor in ChatGPT. They're integrating AI across all their software suites from their operating systems, their search with Bing, their productivity suite, which includes of course Office uh, 365. Uh, as well as uh, LinkedIn from, from the standpoint of uh, social media. I mean, this company is just uh, well positioned and it doesn't have, by the way, you know, the exposure to places like China. Uh, that's uh, of course Apple, which is really a, uh, a technology consumer products company uh, has. And I think that's another thing that uh, investors might appreciate in this company. George, the short term is one thing, right? The valuations are stretched on a on a price earnings, on a price to sales. They're all stretched higher than the 10-year average. But the long term, George, Satya Nadella talking about $500 billion in revenue by 2030. I mean, that's 10% raise in revenue every year up until then. The long term look for this company, you can make a case that short term, it's struggling here in consolidating. It's stocks down 30 some dollars since its last earnings report when it spiked, but no one can argue with the long-term um, outlook yeah. for this company, George. No, there's no doubt. I mean, you just consider this size of this company and you're still generating 10 plus percent sales growth on a year-over-year -year basis compound. That's just phenomenal, especially with this company being extremely profitable. I think one of the things that's uh, you know created a lot of profitability is they're not very much uh, inclusive of a hardware company, and I think that again speaks to the uh, the, uh, the the soundness of their business. Uh, I think at the end of the day too, you have to think about their core operating system business. Uh, I think there's a, a refresh cycle when it comes down to personal computing. I think that's going to be a, a catalyst for this business. I, we talked about I talked about Intel as one of these companies that has actually performed quite well this year. I think based upon that and maybe some of the periphery memory manufacturers like Micron or Western Digital. But, you know, that is, again, a not growing very fast, that, that, that uh, operating system business, but it's still a core revenue driver for uh, Microsoft, not to mention the cloud. So at the end of the day, I mean, this is just a technology monopoly. And, uh, you know, you can't really dispute that, but I think they have the ability to continue to optimize margins, especially when it comes down to integrating software services, cloud, uh, as well as artificial intelligence. And, and that is a huge catalyst for Microsoft going forward. Uh, yeah, it seems like uh, anytime they're struggling in one part uh, or one division of their company, uh, the other one's picking up the slack and actually growing faster than right. you'd expect. I mean, uh, the size of this company is massive, yeah. right? But it is, it's in three of the four indices and it's tied. Why is it down five and a half dollars today? Because the markets are down. Right. All right, great stuff. Thanks to George Tillis, Senior Markets Correspondent here, breaking down Microsoft for us. Uh